All right, in this one, we're going to try and find a special beer, walk you through a little bit of my day, and then we're going to do some first impressions of the Ogbape Druga Foxy. So I'm on my way to, to the liquor store to go get a black and tan, something I've never actually had before, but I heard uh, on a video I was watching the other day, he was, uh, or a friend on Facebook actually, he was talking about how he just picked up a, a black and tan from Yingling. So I want to go get a black and tan from Yingling, but I also want to try and make my own black and tan. So I'm going to go buy a Yingling and uh, a stout and what is it, an ale, I think, to make my own and compare it to the Yingling. So I'm off to the liquor store right now, just about to get on this, this train right here. All right, we'll see if we can find one. So I also have uh, some stuff in the mail, a new microphone for this camera and for my audio recorder. So hopefully that works so I can do some better audio when I'm on the go. I tried two microphones so far and both failed, so I'm hoping this one works. And then uh, I have uh, some stuff from Ogbape, I believe, in the mail. They said they were going to send me a device and their RDA, a mesh RDA. So I'm really looking forward to that. So hopefully we get a, hopefully that is in the mail and I get a chance to do some first impressions tonight with my black and tan. Well, no luck finding the beer that I wanted. So I'm probably going to have to go to a, a really big liquor warehouse here in Colorado called Total Beverage. So I'll go check there. This place cool music, huh? The Stay Puff Man. Oh, look at the pumpkin guy. You want to walk through the spider? You don't want to walk through there? We won't. I just want to look at him. Okay, what else should we look at? Oh, I gotta let you down. You gotta walk a little bit. Are you excited to eat your subway? Kind of. Kind of excited? We're really excited. Really excited. Oh, not a little excited? Not a little. Really excited? Very. Oh, me too. There's my microphone. And there's my vape stuff. Straight from China. Well, it turns out that nobody carries Yingling black and tan in Colorado. Um, and I've looked online on their website, nobody sells it. In Colorado it looks like it's only sold on the East Coast pretty much so and nowhere on the West Coast or in Midwest so I'm out of luck and I looked on into uh, ordering it online and just to ship it here like a six, a six pack is like seven dollars which is cheap right but to ship it here it would be a total of forty dollars that's just ridiculous so I'm just going with the homemade version I will probably will uh, I don't know if I'll ever try the Yingling one but I have the Bass Ale and Guinness Drought Stout. So hopefully this one works. Uh, I don't know if this is the one that people use usually to make a black and tan, but also i um, not sure if any of you guys know what the history is about the black and tans, but I think, I don't know where it originated, but um, in the UK they're called half and half. And the reason for that is because black and tan is actually kind of an offensive term because um, where where the name comes from is World War One. They the veterans of World War One, the British veterans. They were ended up becoming not all of them, of course, but some of them became mercenaries, and from what I understand, and uh, went over to Ireland and killed a lot of Irish people, including regular civilians. They just killed everybody. So, um, and I, I saw a lot of posts online talking about how if you order a black and tan in, in the, in UK or Ireland, especially, you'll probably get your key, teeth kicked in. <laughs> so don't do that. Oh, sorry. I'm getting all confused here cause I'm talking while I'm trying to make this start with the b bass ale. And I think you can start with any ale really, but, uh, bass is, a uh, what it's always it's what everyone always recommends making it with. The world's first pale ale. This is cheap stuff. Six pack for eight dollars. Alright, fairly cheap. And you want to do it halfway up. I was reading that actually a good way to do it is to have a huge head like that. Because then you can pour right on top and not have to worry about it sinking through. It looks like about half. 
All right, and then you use a spoon. People also recommend that you should bend the spoon, and you know, maybe I should, but I don't want to bend my spoons. So I'm going to see if it works without it. And just pour very lightly because you don't want it to break through the barrier. You want it to sit on top. I have no idea how well I'm doing right now. And I'm pouring really slow. I don't know how slow you're supposed to do it, but I want it, I really want it to work. So I'm doing it slow. I do have to be quiet because everyone is sleeping now. And you can hear, you can hear everything in this house, no matter where you are. They do have the fan on, so that helps, but, you know, they can still hear me. All right, let's take a look at that. Hoo-hoo, that actually came out pretty good. Check this out. A little more Guinness at the top than I meant, <laughs> but not bad. Mmm, it's pretty good. Even though one layer is sitting on top of the other, they do blend, and uh, the flavor is very unique. All right, let's go do some uh, first impressions. I don't even know what I'm opening here. All I know is it's a package from Ogvape, I believe. They sent me. They said they were gonna send me a package, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's a tracking number that I've been tracking from them. So I'm pretty sure it's Ogvape. I believe it's a device and an RDA. So, and he told me that it was going to be a mesh RDA. So I'm really excited for that because I've never tried a mesh RDA. Even though I always hear about people, well, with mesh RDAs, I guess it's really hard to build. It's very easy to get a, a dry hit, and people say when you do get a, a dry hit or a burnt hit, it's really bad. So I, I'm not looking forward to that, and with my luck, I probably will get one, but uh, let's take a look. And I do have my, finishing up my black and tan, it's still layered pretty well. So yeah, it's been good. All right, let's take a look. So I just thought this would be something fun to do every once in a while um, when I get new products. I'll just do a first impression, drink a beer and hang out and just see how how it goes. I don't know. Oh yeah. So I have I have seen people talking about this. So the Druga Foxy and the RDA here. Oh, it's not an RDA. It's a Skynet sub ohm tank. Oh, okay. Well, I don't I don't mind that. I love mesh tanks. I was I was really looking forward to an RDA though. I think I am going to open I don't really have time to open both. I have I have homework to do. <sighs> Let's go with the Foxy. Ooh, I love the look of things like this, fresh off a box. And this looks clean for sure. Very nice looking uh, packaging here. Ooh, it's heavy. That's bigger than I thought. It's pretty thick. So there's the device, user manual. How much do we gotta learn here? Minus button, plus button, resistance, battery, voltage, and magnet. Let's let's take a look here. See what this says. So this is a variable wattage mod with quick release button, easy to install and release atomizer. Oh, that is pretty cool. It looks like your regular threaded 510. And then this clip here, this button moves one side of those threads. So that's pretty unique. Powered by two 18650 batteries in series, capable of generating 150 watts with 0.1 to 0.38 ohms and a resistance from 0.05 to 3 ohms. The first VV variable voltage mod that can display resistance in the screen. What does that mean? Okay, dual 18650 quick release um, reads resistance automatically. That's nice. Plus a minus button to adjust voltage, maximum output 150 watts, high quality zinc alloy construction, switchable IML panels, so that's cool. How do we switch the panels out? Oh yeah, so they just come off. Gold plated brass 510 contact. And they do in the manual, which is interesting, they include a graph that shows how it hits as the resistance gets higher. So it looks like you'll be getting 100 watts at about 0.5. It looks like you get up to 50 watts, but when you get to 0.1, oh, below 0.1, I'm guessing, uh, I, don't, I don't know why it would fire less protections probably, but at, at about 0.1, you'll get 150 watts. And then it stays pretty consistent until you get to 0.4 ohms. Then there's a dip at 0.5, then you start getting around 100 watts, 110, something something like that. Oh, they do have it listed here. So 0.05, 80 watts, 0.06, 96 watts, so it goes on and on. All right, let's take a look at this thing. And this does have a coating on it, so you can see just how clean that is, and that looks nice. That is a beautiful device. Fingerprint magnet on the sides here, because it's steel, polished steel, or uh, well, I forgot what it was, zinc alloy. Let's see if we, we can wipe this up for the B-roll, the B-roll footage. Wipe off the sides so they look clean. All right, it's like a mirror. And then you do have a. Uh, there's that quick release button on this side. And on this side is the firing button. On the bottom, you have some uh, venting holes. This is a pretty nice looking 510 too. I like that, uh, that kind of like uh, brushed metal design, a brushed metal look. 
Now, uh, even though these these panels they look great, they are like they feel like really cheap plastic. So there's a screen. Let me wipe this up a little bit. There we go. 150 watts and battery life and ohms. So not a whole lot on there. That's the very basic screen that you can see through the panel. Now, if you take the panel off, that is a pretty crazy looking front panel there. And this is where you have the plus and minus buttons. I don't vape at 100 watts, so, well, I vape at about 90, so that's where we'll, where we'll stick it. So there you see it's labeled wattage or voltage, resistance, and battery life. Do these do anything? Are they just pictures? Just pictures. And a big magnet here. Hold that front panel on. Does this really not have any other features? That is super basic. It looks nice, though. Let's try that quick release. We use a goon. So you can screw it in, just like normal. Can't screw, screw anything in there. Feels a little loose like that, but it does go in. And if you want to do a quick release, And it's not going to catch perfectly just because there, you know, there are tiny threads in there, so you're not always going to land right on it, but... Not bad. So we'll see how that works over time. I wonder how easy it is going to uh, accidentally push that. It's not easy to push. You have to put, and you have to push it pretty far in to release. So um, I worry that it will, you know, if you don't land right on the threads, what happens if you if you keep doing that? And it, could it mess up the threads on your RDA? That would suck. All right, what are we gonna vape here? How about strawberry cream from Ver Vapors? I wanted to vape something that was gonna go well with this black and tan or half and half, but um, there's not a lot of flavors or dessert. T dessert like foods that go well with a, a beer like that other than like very uh, savory so um, I I don't have any meat flavored e-juices to go with my black and tan so I'm just gonna vape whatever tiramisu is one dessert that's supposed to go well with it I don't have any tiramisu uh, e-juice oh shit of course flooded it god damn it Hope that fan isn't too loud for you. I just I have to run it, or else this room just gets too full of vapor. Mm. This strawberry cream is really good. It's like a it's kind of like a strawberry cream with a with a mix of like baked dessert, kind of pretty good. Let's try this uh, black and tan with that e juice. Well, I sure hope that this audio is working on this microphone. Uh, you never know with these things with lav mics. Um, sometimes you put it on your shirt and it's just rubbing up against your clothing too much and it makes too much noise and you, you just can't use any of the audio. So I hope that's not happening. Hope my audio levels are high enough. Hope the battery doesn't die because the battery is almost dead in this recorder. Um, this is this is what I'm using to record the audio and I'll sync it up to the video later. Well, yeah, it's a uh, it's heavy. It is that. It's a pretty, it's a big device, but it's nice and thin. I do like that it's, uh, I mean, width-wise, it's not so big. Uh, thickness, it's pretty thick. Let's see what it is, actually. It's about, it's an inch thick, so. It is a heavy device, but it looks really good. I, I love the way it looks, and it seems to be performing well. 90 watts. It's, uh, it's hitting like I would expect to hit. All right, so that's that. That's um, me trying to find this black and tan stuff and uh, vaping on the, the Foxy from Ogvape, so. I'll catch you next time.